Okay, in the last video, we looked at how you could fine tune your own Alpaca 7 billion model based on the Llama model. And one of the things we did was we used the data set from Stanford because they were nice enough to actually release the data set. But on top of this, what they actually also released was the way that they made the data set. And I thought that this would be interesting to look at in this particular video and try it out of could we make our own data set like this? So what they did was they started out with 175 different human written tasks. And you can see some of these here. So you've got kinds of tasks are things like generate a list, generate a sentence, generate a story, rewrite a sentence, create, write, explain, give. There's a whole bunch of different ones that they've got in here. In total, this makes up the 175 handwritten start tasks. And then what they do is they use GPT-3 to generate that into 52,000 different examples. 175 is not that much. You could sit down and probably in a few hours, maybe a day, you could write it. And if you got other people to help you, would certainly make the, the data set better at generalization as well. So I thought I'd look at how we can do this. So what I've done here is basically get their code, bring it in here. We set it up with simple open AI, clone their repo in, and I've transferred some of the code across to here. So you will need an open AI key for this. And what we're going to do is just look at the data that they have. And then how did they, if we're going to generate more, how will that come out? They've got a number of different functions in here for encoding the prompts and for getting the GPT responses. They also add a bunch of nice things to filter out kinds of language. So if you were doing a custom data set yourself for a particular topic, you could come in here and add to this blacklist of words that you don't want included, that kind of thing. So that's something to think about as well. Then they've basically got the, the actual function, which goes to GPT-3, gets the data. And they've also got some stuff in here regarding scoring the similarities of these. I'm not going to really go into it this much here, but this idea of scoring these similarities is interesting as well. And you could imagine that you would filter your data set to make sure that you don't have too many things that are like almost the same. So you want to deduplicate your data set as well when you would go through this. All right, so if we look at their data, this is bringing in their data, and you'll see that it's pretty simple the way it's set up is that they have an instruction, an input, and an output. Now, a lot of the things don't have an input. It's just the instruction and then the output. So in this case, they've got the proposed an ethical solution to the problem of data privacy, and then it's giving us something back in here. If we change it to look at one of the other ones, we could see, okay, reverse engineer this code to create a new version. And then they're passing in what looks like a Python function to do factorials in there. If we look at, we can see, okay, identify the incorrect word. And then in this case, there is an input, right? And it has to work out, okay, what's the incorrect word there? One more. And you'll see, okay, what is the scientific name for a beaver? And then there's an answer there. So this is obviously not trying to put a lot of knowledge into the actual model. It's trying to guide the model for these kind of instruction finding tuning here. This is what the goal is here. So remember I talked about that it's based on 175 different human written seed instructions. These are what the seed instructions look like. So if we come in here and look at these, we can see that, okay, this is like a code to do if we look in, let's look at for something a little bit simpler just to start out with. All right. So here's something where it would be explain behavior. And then they've got the input behavior cry. And then the output would be, this could be many reasons why the person might cry. It's giving us an answer. Is this classification? No. All right. So this data set here is basically set up so that you can then generate more questions, more instructions similar to this kind of thing. So go and have a look through the 175 and just see, okay, we'll get a sense of what they are. Okay. So what I wanted to do was make a new one. So at first I just was looking at like how they are to get a sense of what's in there and stuff. And then I just made a, a very small data set here. And the idea here is that these are sort of customer service ones where I wanted to focus on things that just relate to customer service. 
So you can see things like refund policy explanation. Can you explain your refund policy? And then it basically goes into the output would be our refund policy allows customers to request a refund. Now, of course, here I'm not, if I was doing it for a real product or something like that, I would make sure that the data was factual in that sense. But here we're just trying to fine tune it for this kind of thing. Troubleshooting Wi-Fi, changing password. How do I change my password? To change your password, log into your account, go to sitting. Standard sort of stuff, but it's all sort of customer service stuff. Lost package inquiry. My package hasn't arrived yet. What should I do first? And you can see here that it's very standard customer support stuff. And what I wanted to see was, okay, can we take this and then generate a lot more of these? To do this, I basically just run this function, this generate instruction following the data function. I basically saved off my instructions there into new seed tasks. I've created a new folder for this as well. And then I need to determine how many instructions that I want. So I think I'm just passing in six or something like that. And I'm going to get it to try and generate five from each of these. And then how much do we want to do it in a batch? If we've got a machine with a large number of cores, we can actually set it to do quite a number of these calls at the same time to speed it up. And it's not super quick doing this, but you can see that, okay, we then run this, it's gone through and now it's generated 32 instructions in this case but it's only kept 29 of them. So my guess is that the other three contain some of the things that were in the blacklisted words, et cetera, that we don't want. Now that we've got this, we can bring them in. So it will also generate the most similar instructions and the average similarity. Just for the sake of simplicity here, I'm just popping those off. So we're not going to use them. We're going to look at exactly what came out. And you can see, sure enough here, we've now got our own ones. I want to compare two products. What should I consider? It's definitely a customer service kind of thing. How do I create an account? Again, another very customer service. You can imagine it's the kind of thing someone would ask a customer service agent. How can I improve my credit score? Let's just look at a few more. What type of documents should I include in my resume? Some of them are probably more related to what we want. And this is where we could use the similarity thing a little bit if we were going for making a product out of this for looking at it. Let's just look at how do I write a cover letter? All of these have been generated from the seed data set that we've put in there. Now, this one really is not customer service, right? So we'd want to think about, okay, this is where that we could use the similarity to basically check that maybe this is not an appropriate kind of thing. But we've certainly got some that were right in here. And we've certainly got the idea of where someone's asking a question and they're getting a response. You notice we don't have any in here that are things like write me some code or summarize this kind of thing. That's not what we're after. We're after very much question and response with a customer service agent. So once we've generated this, now we can actually just use this as the data for training a new model. So it, obviously here I only generated a very small number of instructions with just 29, but we could ramp this up to generate 50,000, 100,000, the better quality that the new seed tasks are, then the better quality that our overall data set would be. So you want to be very conscious of that when you're creating it and thinking about it. If you were creating a chat data set, you would want to think about how many interactions in the chat am I going to have in the data set too? For example, am I passing in something where it's just like we've done here, question and answer, or am I passing in where Person A says, good morning. Person B says, good morning, how are you? Person A says this. And so you've got this sort of back and forth going on so that it's learning multi-steps in a conversation, not just the first response in that case. But anyway, have a play with this. You can certainly make some nice data sets to train up your own custom alpaca style model for instruction fine tuning for a particular niche or domain that you're interested in. Anyway, if you have any questions, please ask them in the comments. As always, if this was useful to you, please click and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.